Hi everyone, Sherry from Granny Sewing Room stopping in to say hi and let you know what I'm up to for the day. I have been in bed the last couple days pretty sick. Uh, husband brought a cough home and I think I caught a cold and then stomach flu. And But I do not have the coronavirus and even so I stay home. I don't go nowhere. Even when I'm sick I really don't go anywhere. But uh, first exciting thing is I got my jelly rolls from uh, Jordan Fabrics and it is a called the Modern Twist Collection from Robert Kaufman and boy is it pretty 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 I love uh, these bright colors I don't know these, these are just so pretty they, they are just beautiful beautiful and I thought this would be for another man's quilt you know with the teals and the greens and the blues I see it has some purples in there but it is so pretty and I bought a yard of each probably for borders probably end up going to need more but I hate buying more than what you need so I did get that that was kind of exciting I got all my triangles uh, picked apart and sewn back together so that's exciting so I just spend a day and the big ones all cut out uh, so I'll just spend a day sewing all them squares together and uh, uh, trimming them up you know to square them up some what I'm going to do today is kind of walk you through some steps how I do a t-shirt on my 10 needle I'm doing my grandbaby a t-shirt with uh, baby shark -a so I'm going to get that going and I already made one video just before I was getting sick and the lighting in my house is so bad um, one whole side of me was was just in the dark or maybe I'll show a couple clips of that just for fun. I look pathetic. But anyway, has anyone told you you're special today? If not, let me be the first because you are in God's eyes. Yeah, I'll walk you through them steps of my uh, t-shirt making in the hoop with my fast frames. And not in the hoop. No, no, no. It's not in the hoop. In the hoop is when I use the frames that come with my uh, tin needle. So I'm also going to try to get one a project not today done with a in the hoop maybe show you a tooth fairy pillow that I'll show you some of them but maybe do a tooth fairy pillow or a little purse or something that I do in the hoop and I'll, I'll show you that process too but this is my way of doing a t-shirt on my 10 needle so I hope you enjoy it and I'll talk to you soon Here's an example of a design in Sew It Pro that I put together for someone. Uh, I'm going to use this design, but I'm removing Zoe. Happy fourth birthday. I just come over here and I click on the color for the words that I want to remove. And hit delete. So that's just the design. Now I will minimize this and I am going to pull up in brilliance because that and if this is a free program and I buy my fonts and I just add my fonts into this and then you can just type it instead of with so what pro the problem with it you have to do one letter at a time I don't know if they've updated it. Uh, I haven't been doing this for a while. So, but this stores all of your different fonts that you can purchase. And it does come with some. But I have several fonts. So, and then I will just put her name right here. Remove that. Ariana and then I'll just start looking for different ooh, different fonts that I want and if 
if you want to change the color in here you can go over here and change out the color uh, you can look for the thread that you're using let me see I use that's the color I use or the thread type and let's find probably a pink or a purple so you can change the colors you can change the fonts um, and then what you do you go up to file save as and then I'm saving it to my thumb drive and I have different folders within my thumb drive that I would put it in and let me just put it in I thought I had an Ariana folder I do all right so it's saved in there as AAA Now I go back, open my Sew Up, Sew Up Pro Up, I hit File, Merge, and then I find my file in my thumb drive. Make these larger. So these are all the files I have just in that folder now in the uh, um, let me see over here in the embrilliance I should have made this smaller So let me go back and see what size. That's two inches. Two inches is not going to fit. That's probably not the one I really want anyway. But let's do one inch. Bring it down. Save as. So what pro get rid of that file merge and then you adjust it where you would want it. The way I save this is if I like everything I go to file save as and then I find the the folder I have on my thumb drive and then I will put it in there it's called Sharkadoo now I'll take this thumb drive and go plug it into my uh, machine now here is another feature in the in brilliance free software if I don't like how those letters are lining up so you can move these to the way you like them I kind of like my letters touching a little better so you just hit that green little dot and then you move them over to where you like them because I don't want to see them tails when I'm uh, when I'm done embroidering so that looks a little better okay the H needs to go over just a little bit
perfect, I think, anyway. I hope the lighting's working okay. But my first my first step is to uh, do a t-shirt with fast frames in the hoop. Sorry, I know this probably drives a lot of you nuts because this is so grungy. But I use these non-stop when I was sewing for people. And uh, But it, what I do is I fold them. Give them a little fold. And then I use this document clip thing. Boy, the, sh the lighting's horrible in my house. I don't know how to fix it. Sorry, everyone. But uh, so I use this uh, thing for, it's in the office supplies and hooks documents together, I'm sure. Uh, so you just kind of clip it on the side here. Mine is full of glue. So, and you know when you're on camera, things won't work. So that's just, that's just part of the game here. I keep saying I'm going to order a new one, but I have slowed down uh, embroidery in for people. <clears throat> it was getting a little burned out, but mainly uh, my back and my neck. I was having to go get shots in my neck all the time. So when I was doing it way too much, it's, I was in more pain than not. Well, these work really good. Alright, so see how I got that just clipped on there? And I like to order the pre-cuts for the uh, tearaway, paper tearaway. And now I will mark this with a ruler and a friction pin just so I know where the center of this is. And there's little notches in. And they got them nice magnetic frames but they're out of my range. I find, you know, there's everything I want, but I can't use, possibly use everything. I mean, I don't sew 24-7. I don't, and that's why one reason I calm myself down about buying so much uh, fabric and all the, you know, up-to-date new fingle fangle things because if I'm not using them uh, to me it's I, I, it's just I'm wasting it but anyway see how I mark the center of that now I am going to go outside because I don't like to spray this around my machines and I am going to spray this down with a uh, 505 spray so I'll be back now I have my t-shirt and I kind of give it a little press because you want to get the moisture, or well, wait, that's for a, a heat press. But you want to get the wrinkles out of it. So I give it a little press. And then I give it a fold to know where the center of it is. And give it a little crease just to give me a guideline. I'll do it better once I iron my fusible on there. So that's pretty good. Oh heavens, I should have cleaned off my uh, towel here. I just used a towel. I took a ping pong table apart my kids had when they were younger, and there was four sections to it. So I used one section right here for my kind of cutting board and ironing board up here, and then I got a couple sections downstairs. So and I just, I, I reused them, repurposed them. So now this is a cutaway stabilizer, fusible. And I put this right here on the back because this will really help the puckers of the embroidery design. And I press this down until it sticks. And I will cut this part away after I have the design on here. And the, uh, when the design's on there, then I use a different uh, stabilizer, like a soft cloud, so, so it doesn't irritate the skin wearing the t-shirt. So let that cool a little bit.
all my quilting pieces are up here. These are little fibers from my jelly roll. So, all right. So my t-shirt's pretty, pretty straight. Give me a little mark again here. I give it a little press. Then I take my ruler and I always go down about, on a kid's shirt I go down about two inches depending on how large the design is because I find I want it least in the middle of the sleeves. Let me see, in the middle of the sleeves here. So I am going to go about two, one and a half here. So I'm going to give it a mark on my press line. And my design is six and a half uh, inches high. So I am going to go three and a quarter, and I'm going to put that right there. And that's how high I want it. I already know my design will fit because it's only like four or five inches or something. But I'm going to put a little cross right here because that's what my sew machine is going to look for. So I take my fast frame and I just slide it up underneath. And you can see the line you drew on your fast frame. You can see the line right here. And I want to meet, meet the two my cross there to the cross on my fast frame. And you can kind of hold it up and you can kind of see it. And if all else fails, you just put a pin through it, find it on your fast frame. Now I'm using the the fold line as my center and I'm using the line up on top here as where I want my design to uh, end and I want to bring that as far as up to the frame as I possibly can and then I'm just going to straighten this out until I have it nice and straight with my line on my fast frame Then I kind of pin it down just a tad bit, but that 501 spray really helps hold that in place. Once I get it all lined up, I just put a couple pins in. Only because I want to know where the sides of my frame end. I don't want my needle hitting it. I pinned around my fast frame next to my fast frame just so I know where my I don't want my needle to go past these pinpoints but I have my fold line uh, even lined up with the line I made on the tear away on my fast frame and now I'm going to put this on the machine and I will show you that part This just screws on to your fast frame. And there's little tips right there that fits in. Screw it down nice and tight. And this goes fits on your the arm of your sewing machine. And it fits just like that. And I just make sure that the because I've made this mistake more than once so you want to make sure your t-shirt is under the bottom of your t-shirt you want to make sure it's under that arm so I stick my hand in here and that t-shirt's laying underneath it and now now I got her now I got her under the machine and now my thread let me get up close here. I leave my red on my 10, my black on my 6, and my white is always on number 1. And I don't know if you can see the numbers because I can switch 
the threads around on my machine to to uh, coordinate with the how I'm going to th uh, have it uh, sew out if that makes sense otherwise I can switch the colors using my machine to the pattern I can switch them colors around on my machine and I can I will always know in my mind that one six and ten are white black and red because those I use those colors a lot my machine's on I haven't picked out the thread colors yet or um, get my fabrics that I use and here's how I store my applique fabrics I haven't got any of them picked out for this pattern in particular but here's how I store my applique I just put them in like shoe boxes and uh, in different colors so because I use all the different colors and I don't throw all my scraps away because that is great applique so that's kind of how I store my fabric to use for applique to uh, pull up my let me see if I can get close to pull up my design in my thumb drive I hit this button here and then I have folders in my thumb drive and I have them named as well this one would be under my granddaughter's name so that's easy Ariana and those are the designs that are in her folder on my thumb drive and then I look for the design my eyes are horrible oh here we go and let me zoom out so it shows you the design right there so here's the design so I want to hit set edit now I need to rotate it because my t-shirt is upside down um, the neck of the t-shirt is facing me and the bottom of the t-shirt is facing the machine so I need to rotate this so now it's upside down I hope you can see it alright there you go it's upside down so now I want to know where I'm going to put it on my t-shirt so I hit the sewing machine with the magnifier I upgraded to the camera so I don't know if that means the both of them are the same but I hit the magnifier now that is my t-shirt see the mark I made on my t-shirt is right there so that's where I want this green mark to be because that's going to be the center of the design so I go back over here and I start moving that green arrow to line up with my mark that I made for my t-shirt alright so now it's lined up I'll show you my t-shirt and I'm not using the snowman method here I use this method so I say okay and I'm going to I'm fine now I'm on my mark I hit okay and now down here on this button this I'll show I'll let you see what this does this will outline your design on your t-shirt to show you where it's going to fit in but this one it would allow you to go to top and bottom remember I put the pins in my t-shirt to know where the edges of my frame is I'll show it so now I hit that and here's these buttons so I'm going to go to the top of my it's kind of hard to show you both of it but it just went to the top of my t-shirt here and 
Okay, so here's the camera. So the green button are the green arrows right here, and it's going to it's landing right below my or above my pin on my t-shirt. So I'm pretty good with that. So I'll come down here and I'm going to see where the bottom of my design is going to go. And it moved it, and there's the bottom of my t-shirt with the pin. So that's pretty good. Now I can move my design down, which I probably will. I want to see where the side of my t-shirt goes, so I go to the side. And here's the pin over here I pinned to my uh, frame. And let me go to the other side. And there's the other pin. So I know it's within my frame. But now what I'm wanting to do, I'm going to go back to the center. I want to, so as long as I'm, I get out of here, close it, can you see? So I'm going to move my design down a little ways because I have plenty of room. So I'm just going to go, see how it's moving? And then I'm going to, let me zoom out. And then I'm going to go back to the, oh, I hit the wrong thing. Back to edit. Oh, back down here to this button right here. And now I want to see where the top of my design is going to be again. Because I moved, I moved my design down to the bottom of my t-shirt. Okay, here's the top of my t-shirt. I made a line to show me where the top was. Here's the pin. So my design is going to start or end the, uh, where that uh, green arrow or, or crosses. And there's the bottom of my design. And that's going to, that's plenty of room because my frame is on the other side of this pin. Hope I'm making sense. But let's go back to the center. And now I want to show you, uh, close this. Now I want to show you what this button does. When I hit this button, it's just going to outline put it show you the outline of the design on my t-shirt so I'm going to hit this button and show hit this button and show you my t-shirt so you can see where your needles are going to end and if there's enough room without you hitting that frame So there's, that's how I line up my t-shirt. See my arms under there? My t-shirt's under the arm. And now I'm going to get my colors of thread to coordinate with my fabrics. And uh, once I get that done, I'll come back and show you how I do some applique in. Alright, so I'm going to stitch out the first placement line. Now, I wouldn't have all these threads if I had my uh, automatic needle uh, threader not broke, but uh, I have to kind of watch them because I had to thread my needle by myself until I get it fixed. But I can't lift this machine in, up each time to take it in to get service, so I try to service myself. <laughs> and you know, you're kind of scared as much as this machine costs to play with it too much but um, anyway here we go I'm going to show you the design I'm going to hit so oh and I need to show you that now I am going to can you see this shows you the needle number and the thread color for that number now I am going to switch them out my number two is going to be yellow instead of it's going to but see number two says it's white my white is always on number one, so I am going to switch that out. And let me show you how I do that. There's a little button here, and it says switch. So I want 
my number two to be number one. And then, oh, here's the button over here. I'm looking through my viewfinder, so it's kind of hard. Switch. So now my number two stitch will be, number two needle will be white. And I'll close that. Number eight, it's already on pink. Number three, nope, I need to switch my number three color thread out because my four is three. So I go back here. So three is four. And I hit switch. Six is always black. Seven is going to be number two. Seven, two. Hit switch. And let me see. And number seven for blue is going to be nine. So seven is going to be nine. Switch. And I think those are my thread colors. Anyway, we'll see. If not, I stop at it each time. Doesn't look like number eight. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, so my first line is going to be a placement line. So I'm going to hit stop because I want it to stop after it does the placement line. So make sure everything's out of the way. Keep my fingers out of the way. And I'm going to hit, let me show you. So I hit lock, start. And it's going to just stitch out my first stitch line. Show me where my sharks are going to be. It's kind of hard uh, filming, holding the thing, the camera, and trying to trying to watch the needle too. And all this thread, I don't want it to get bumped up. So this looks like this is going to be the bottom part of the shark. And that's going to be a white, white uh, fabric I'm going to need down here. So what it's going to do is just stitch out every placement line for the piece of white fabric that I need to put down on here. And then after this, and I put the fabric down, uh, well, I'll take you through the next step there. Now this is what I'm talking about, the uh, light, heat and bond light. I just iron that on the back of my fabric before I put it on my applique. And this iron here, a must when you're doing applique. Must. Because it gets, it fits in that little hoop, you know, to iron that down. So let me get that ironed down and I will show you the next step. And I got that all ironed down. So there's the fusible part that goes on the shirt itself. So I just line this up to down my placement stitch. Make sure I get it all covered. And this is where the chopstick comes in handy. So I'm going to hit stop so it stops at that next stitch. And it's going to, whoops. Let's see. Oh, that would help if I had that in there. It helps when you don't get a lot of distractions. The phone ringing, my dog barking.
Now this is the tack down stitch. And after this gets done stitching out, that's when I remove it from the uh, machine. And I'll cut all around this. Trying to keep all the threads. Like I said, all these threads wouldn't be here if I had my uh, automatic needle threader working. Always check to make sure it's still, the arm is still clear under there. Now that's that step, back to the ironing board. Now these are the scissors I find the most useful, um, least expensive. I have gotten these applique scissors here, but they get dull so fast. And uh, Janome, I think this is just an off-brand one, but you know that you get in there and you cut close to your stitching line but I find I just go back and get these each time so here's what you do you get as close as you can to your stitch line and you cut away your fabric Now I save all these little pieces because that's why I have them in shoe boxes because it already has the fusible on them and I never know what I'm making. When I make tooth fairy pillows, these could be the white of the eyes. Um, yeah, so I just save my scraps. And I get as close as possible and then I have to get this part right here removed and then I use um, let me grab it. I use a seam ripper and I just kind of carefully get in there and give it a little tear. Get my scissors in there. Clean it up. And this is where having this small iron comes into to play. Let me see, I want to make sure I got it kind of clean. looks pretty good. Let me make sure you can see me. And I take this little iron and then I just iron that down and let it fuse to the t-shirt.
and that helps when I tack the next one down and it, when it goes through the wash machine that baby stays in place and doesn't lift up. So I will get this back under the machine and show you the next step. I might not, I'm probably not going to go through every step of how I do that but I do that with every piece of fabric. I will uh, bring it over here, cut it out and then iron it on. So I get it back on the machine. Make sure the back of the t-shirt is under this arm as you put it on your machine. Because you would hate to sew the back of your t-shirt to the top. Get everything out of the way. Make sure you can see me. And go to the next stitch. So the next one is my pink thread. Get your chopstick. Make your machine stop after tack down. So now this will be in pink fabric. And I have pink already used because I had it in my shoe box. And I'm just trying to keep the rest of the thread away from my stitching until it gets connected up there. put my fabric down to cover up all my stitching I use my chopstick to kind of hold the fabric in place as it stitches out. Now it's going to do my next placement. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go cut this out, iron it, and then go on to my next, uh, next color. Now it's doing the green shark. And I want to trim my thread. I put a magnet on the side of my uh, stand here so I can put these scissors they, and then they just magnetize right to the side. Hope you can see me. And now it's going to be the placement or the tack down stitch. And this is kind of a pain. I really need to get that threader fixed. I always check to make sure that t-shirt's not under on top of this arm under here. Because you'll ruin your shirt. So this is a step I go through for every uh, color of fabric. So I'll get that done and I'll show you when it, I'm completely done with all my tack down.
You guys have a great day. Go out, do something creative, or stay home or do something creative. But whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord, and your blessings will always come back to you. Do me a favor, hit the like button, or the thumbs up. I'm not certain. I guess they're the same. Thumbs up, like. Hit the like button, thumbs up, share my videos, and have a blessed day, everyone. Bye-bye.